Hi, my name is Cindy Rang and this is my granddaughter Eliza and we are going to show you how to make our Easter, Easter mug rug. My daughter and I have owned and operated a busy quilt shop in Washington State for over 20 years. We have a retreat center, an active YouTube channel, and a large pattern line featuring our creations. My two sons work on machines. One daughter-in-law is our videographer and the other is a long-arm quilter. We are a family that love each other, we laugh together, and every once in a while we get some work done. We have a crew that are saints for their efforts at keeping us on track. Thanks for joining us on our wild ride. All right, so we have started making mug rugs. We've been doing it actually for a while. And we realized, but we've started sharing them with you. This is only our second one, yeah. I think. But we started it, well, yeah, because we've done other things, but we, um, we started the mug rug thing in February and we made a heart. And yes. then we realized we really should have made the heart in January so you could have it ready for Valentine's Day. And in February, we should have made the St. Patrick's Day one. Yes. So I apologize. So what we're going to do is we are also giving you this pattern. And so this is just a quick little four leaf clover. The only disclaimer though, is at the end, I'm just going to remind you, you would not sew this one together the same as this one, because it would be very, very difficult to be able to turn yeah. this right side out. Yeah. So instead we just fused these together and then we just did um, a stitch on the outside edge. The twins. Twins, yes. Lucky twins. Yes. Super lucky. Super yes. lucky. So the other thing too is if you don't want to do it like that, you can just cut this out and fuse it onto a larger square and you can make it that way also. So anyway, we apologize that this is a little late, but just in case you were doing a little holiday basket, we have a thick basket with lots and lots of them in there and we like to pull out different ones every month. So that um, we've linked this pattern for you. So. What we're gonna show you how to make today is an Easter egg. So your pattern is super simple, it just looks like this. Um, and what we'll have you do is I would suggest that you, um, we don't wanna show them that side because we don't have this fabric anymore. <laughs> They're gonna want it. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry, we're gonna show you something else cooler. I'll show, it's, uh, this is gonna be a surprise for you. Like I said, we've been making mug rugs for a long time. And so um, so now we're sharing some fun things with you and things that we, we enjoy. Um, so anyway, so this is the egg pattern. And what we're gonna suggest that you do is that you print it out onto freezer paper. And we can sell you freezer paper or it's the same thing if you just use your Reynolds uh, freezer paper from the store. Um, same idea. And what is cool about freezer paper, if you've not used it before, is that one side is, um, I don't know if it's plastic or wax. I always say wax, but I feel like people um, correct me a little bit, but I think it's wax. Yeah. And what happens, you'll see when we use it, is that when we iron it onto a surface, it sticks just long enough for us to do what we need to do, and then we peel it off and it doesn't leave a residue. So you will need that. When you do trace your pattern, we do suggest that you use a pencil. Um, because then nothing is going to get off onto your fabric, which is good. You will need a good pair of scissors. And then the other thing that we want to mention is that you could decorate your egg just a little bit, and you'll see when we get down to what we've done a little bit, um, we have sewn some Rick Rack on. But if you have some really cool ribbon, if you have some buttons, the ribbon you're going to want to sew on ahead of time, the buttons you can sew on after. You can see this one was added afterwards so you can decorate your eggs any way that you would like to in our store um, if you don't have kind of an assortment of rickrack we have a bunch of different sizes a bunch of different colors i have a, a love for these little ones i just love a tiny little rickrack i think it's kind of fun so we have this in a variety of colors and it's 99 cents a yard so it's inexpensive or for $14, you get 12 yards because that extra $2, do you know what you're paying for? That cool wooden spool, <laughs> right? It's a, on a cool wooden spool, 12 yards for 14 bucks. So you're paying $2 for the wooden spool. Um, we use a little bit of the pink. So before we get to the project, I wanna show you something. So what we're gonna make is we're just gonna show you just a really quick way just to make these little eggs. But look what you can do 
if you just make a bunch of these eggs, you can put them together. Kind of, let me see if I have enough room here to do this. You can kind of put them together. And again, there's hidden gems on the other side of fabrics that are no longer available. So don't ask what's on the other side. But, right. right. So anyway, you can make a bunch of eggs and then, and you can put whatever fabric you want, but I really like kind of the multicolored eggs thing. And this would make a super cute holiday table runner, don't you think? Yeah. Because you could put this together like this and you'd finish the eggs the same way that you're doing just your regular little um, mug rug and then just put them together and then where they touch, all we have to do is go to the sewing machine. You could hand sew it if you want to, but I would just go to the sewing machine and I would just do a tiny little tacky zigzag stitch. And by tacky, I don't mean tacky as an icky. I mean tacking it, right? Tacky? Yeah. It's a tacky stitch. And so just tack it right there. And then that's all I would do tack is it, kind tack of, but it, tack it, exactly. Tack it, tack just, it. yeah, just sew those all together like that. And sew it there, sew it there, sew it there. And then you have this really cute Easter egg table runner. Yeah. Kind of cute, right? Yeah. So anyway, so that's just a little option. That's not the exact thing that, well, we're going to make these exact thing, but. Um, not the table runner. The table runner. That's just a little bonus. That's a little bonus suggestion, right? Yes. Okay. So let's show you how to make this. So all you need, and I was going to tell you, you know, something kind of fun is my grandma, um, we never used batting when I was a kid, when we would sew. I didn't know there was such a thing as batting. I think I've, I've told others this before that I didn't know you could buy something to put inside of a quilt. We always used old blankets, old, um, and sometimes we had old icky wool blankets and that's what we would put on the inside. Or if we were making um, placemats or table runners, my grandma would use an old towel. And I think of that every once in a while when I have an old towel that just gets a little dingy and a little icky, it's been washed a million times. You know, it's not going to shrink. It's absorbent and it's soft. So, you know, you could, if you didn't have weird little leftover bits of batting, which of course we do have yes. all kinds of it and we save it for these sorts of things. But if you don't have it, you could just use a towel. I think it's kind of a fun thing. So what you're going to do is you're going to layer this and then your two sides of your egg. Now I want to show you the rickrack. What we did with the rickrack, people um, get nervous about rickrack because they think the way that they sew it, that you have to sew it on, you know, crooked. But notice mm -hmm. this, and we went ahead and did just kind of this yellow thread so you could see it but just so right down the center of it. You don't have to do anything crazy. Mm -hmm. And even on this tiny little stuff, you sew this down super, super easy. So you can decorate this, you can do crisscrossy things, you can put some circles on there, pick a cool fabric, whatever you'd like. So this is one side of your egg, and then you put your right sides together for your other side of your egg. And then we're gonna take this freezer paper pattern, and we're gonna put this on here, and we're going to iron it down. And after we iron it down, we are going to sew right on that line, right? We're going to do that. We're going to be right back. Okay, so you can see that when this has been ironed on, see, there it go. Do you hear it? Yeah. Let these guys hear it. So it's nice and sticky. And so what happens is you can use this by cutting things out. But what we decided to do is. Eliza just sewed right on the line. But what happened is there's two little marks down here. So you're gonna back stitch and sew around here to the other one and back stitch because then that's where we're going to turn it right side out. And when you trim this, give yourself a little bit of extra room there where we're going to turn it out. And then you can come in and you know, they say a quarter of an inch with quilting, but really you can do a little bit closer together than that um, if you want to, so there's not a lot of bulk. And then um, we're gonna turn it right side out and then we're gonna top stitch anyway. So when we top stitch that, will give it that nice little finished look. And again, if what you want to make is the table runner, you would make these all the same way. Those scissors are as big as you, They're as big as your arm. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Okay, maybe not. Hmm. I mean, I can't kill them. 
Are you doing all right? Want me to help you? Okay. These scissors are humongous. Let me help you. We picked the biggest scissors we could find. Why? I don't know. Because they were pink. Brandon must have picked them out. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so then once you've done that, this little freezer paper, you want to be, mm, I guess I would say you want to be kind of gentle with it. If you're just ripping super crazy, you really could rip out your stitches, right? And so it's almost like ripping out a check. I usually put my finger on top of the stitch line and then rip that out. And it's kind of, yeah, it's still a little sticky on there, isn't it? I'm not sticky, like sticky, sticky. It's just ironed to it because there's no residue. And typically with freezer paper, you can reuse it a couple of times. Obviously this we're using one time and you don't have to use freezer paper. I suppose if you think your paper is not going to slip, you can just use a regular piece of paper or cut it out of a template. That was the other thing my grandma and I used to do. We used to trace our, um, well, in this case, Easter egg or whatever we were making onto a cereal box. And that was our quilting template or template, depending upon where you're from. And if you have little bits of paper left in your seam allowance or whatever, it just becomes drier lint, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna be a big deal if, um, so I've seen people in classes take little um, pins and they poke out, they try to get all of the little paper when they're paper piecing or something out of the seam and you don't have to do that. That's a big egg. Yeah. It has to be big enough for something to drink and a cookie. True. So I don't know if it's big enough. Or bigger. Yeah, right? Want some big cookies. Sugar cookies. That's what we need to do is make some <gasps> make some Easter cookies and decorate them. That's a good idea. The boys would probably like that too. Do some decorating. How are you doing there? I know it's because it's this is some good freezer paper. It's like super stuck. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now, oh no! Wait, wait. Wait. But oh, wait. <laughs> wait. Wait. Okay, okay. So when all the paper's off, then all you're gonna do is turn it right side out. That's why we left that little hole right there. Yeah. So we're gonna turn, and that's why you also want to double um, backstitch, double tack, whatever, mm -hmm. through the end there, is because otherwise when you're pulling that out, you'll pull those stitches out. And then if you have a purple thing, which I do, let's make sure this iron is on. Got that purple thing? I got it. <laughs> so the purple thing, we use this bosh all the time, right? I don't know how many of these I have. I have them all over the place. Um, it is a bodkin. If you're ever going to, um, you know, like run elastic or something through something, but it also has a little pointer at one end and a flat one on the other end. And, and, um, when you're it's ironing, iron it, it's a, yeah, it it's is. A it's an oven mitt. Yeah. Except mm -hmm. if you didn't use the right batting, it wouldn't work. Mm -mm. Right. And so what you can do with this is, um, you can kind of run along and just kind of make sure that that seam is all the way out. And even if you um, had that in there with your iron on it, it um, it's not a meltable plastic. I mean, I suppose if you were like super crazy and um, like touched crazy, it, crazy, 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 maybe you could melt it, but you know, I'll leave it in something sometimes and press on it if I have something that's particularly difficult and I've never melted one. Mm. Okay, so we're going to go along and we'll press this. Look how cute that is. It's really cute. It is super cute. And so here was our little 
And then what we can do, we're probably going to do like a little bow or maybe a little button. You can put something else on button, there. A little yeah. button. Yeah, you could do all kinds of things. You could, if you have sewing things, you could decorate your egg. We have all kinds of little, gosh, ribbons and all kinds of things. You could yeah. really go crazy decorating your egg and then layer them together. It wouldn't have to be just one row of, I can see the wheels are turning, aren't they? Hmm. Yes, because you have time to make some more of these. And then what happens, you have this goofy little end, right? So what you're going to do, this is the only part that's, I wouldn't say that it's hard, but what you're going to do is fold this all in. And the reason that you need extra right there, I don't know if they can see what we're doing. Let me put my glasses back on. And I usually will trim off, let's trim off just a little bit extra of this um, batting so we don't have quite so much that bulk in there. Yeah. We're gonna fold that under. And then it just takes a little bit of fussing to get that kind of the way that you want it. And sometimes, I used to make the mistake of doing a smaller opening so I didn't have quite so much to do, but then I couldn't get it turned out through that small opening. Mm. So now I just go ahead and it takes a little bit of time, but you just kind of press it as you're turning it in and you can trim some of that fabric off. You would just want to give yourself enough room and um, so that you can either whip stitch it closed or when you come around the top of it, so I'm going to poke that in there. And this is again where your little purple thing really comes in because you can fuss with it a little bit. Because then what we're going to do, let me grab one of the other ones, is because then after you're done, you're just going to come in and you'll top sew right along that edge. And let's see if you can kind of tell. Oh, you can kind of tell that right here was where we turned yeah, it in. You, can you see that? Yeah, a little bit. It's a little, has a little flat spot. And yeah, so we just top good. stitch, and that way you don't have to hand sew. You could whip stitch that closed, but if you're top stitching right close to the edge, and then we just came in, let's hold this up so they can see it. They could probably see it better from this side. And then we just came in, that's about a half an inch. You could just use your, um, your foot to measure that, and then just come in and come around one more time. That second time, it just gives it that nice little look. finished look. Yeah, we really like that. And then you can see that's where we so would our button on afterwards. We'll hold that up so they can see it. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so that's it. So we'll lay these out. We're going to get this all top stitched and then lay them out and um, take some pictures at the end. And um, we're going to make a whole bunch of these for Easter, right? So we can yeah. eat our um, sugar cookies with them, right? And even chocolate eggs, maybe. And chocolate eggs. Absolutely. All right, you guys. Happy Easter. A little early. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.